and I can tell you um, from past sessions we've had with Hubert, uh, it's gonna. You guys are definitely in for a treat. Uh, he asked me. He said, "Is it okay if I maybe go a little bit over the hour time?" I know he's got a lot of stuff he wants to share with you guys. So uh, he's the third and final speaker. So uh, Hubert, I'll go ahead and turn the room over to you. I know you're working on getting the desktop sharing going. Uh, you can come on and do a sound sound check and uh, take things away. Audio one two. Audio one two. I shall make sure that I'm using this, guys. Using it right. If you can hear me, just give me a visual yes in the chat box. You should also be able to see my screen, I hope. Okay, all right. So I have a, I have a love-hate relationship with, with, with every single webinar software that I use. Sometimes I can make them work, and sometimes they just won't work at all for me. And I think it's just because, I think it's operator error on my part. It's never the problem of the webinar software, obviously. Um, you're a little muted, so let me see if I can turn up. I think that's about as loud as I can get my voice on the mic. Let me see. I'll, I'll try a little bit louder. Is that good? Can you hear me now? We'll get it all dialed in here just because I'm going to be sharing uh, PowerPoint instead of doing it through Omnovia just because I like the little drawing tool a little bit better. Okay. I'm really visual. I'm dyslexic. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of drawing and stuff. It'll look like an eighth grader is drawing on the, on the screen and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just here to show you kind of like one of the one of my favorite trades that I do. I trade a lot of gold. I trade a lot of bonds. Truth be known, I'll trade anything. If there was a market in toothpicks and I thought I could make money in it, I would do it. If there was a market in Tic Tacs, I would do it. What's your area of expertise? You know what? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what's going on on my area of expertise. I mean, I will trade anything and everything that moves. So before I get started, I'm actually registered. I'm a registered Series 3 and 30. So I have some uh, things that I have to make sure I take care of before I start to talk, okay? Now, I would do this anyway because it's the right thing to do, but also I get to do it because it's illegal, all right? So uh, killed GC shorts this year. Yep, made a lot of money on shorting gold. That's awesome. So uh, does everyone here understand or do you understand that trading is risky, that you're probably going to lose all your money trying to learn how to trade? Does, does everybody understand here? All right, and I've actually got a little bit of allergy, so if I start sneezing, I will try to hit the sneeze button. Usually, I'll sneeze like three to five times in bursts, and I've been doing it all day today, so hopefully, I don't get into a little sneezing fit here. Okay, does everybody understand that past performance is not indicative of future return, and just because I look like I know what I'm doing does not mean it will work for you. So are we all good? I just want to make sure. I always make the joke like it, your trading career may end up being like a, a bad country song. Your wife's going to hate you. She's going to leave you. Your dog's going to hate you. It's going to leave you. You're going to lose your truck and lose your house. Okay? So as long as everybody's good and everybody understands that this is for big girls and big boys, you can, you can pull up your big girl panties and we can talk about how trading really works. All right? All right, let's go. All right, so I'm, let me know if these slides advance because now you should see a slide that says how it all got started. Do you see that slide? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt here to test out to see if everyone's paying attention. Tell me what the answer to this question is. What is the answer to this question? Oh, lots of sniffling. Four, oh, so Rick R. got a five. Uh-oh, uh, Rick, you're going to have problems. Five hedged. Okay, that makes sense. All right, all right so 22. That's, that's a, There you go. That's a good 22-6. Cecil, I don't know, man. With <laughs> all right, cool. Can I think about it? All right, so this is how this this trade, how this trade kind of all got started, and how a lot of people would call me the the gold guy, which is kind of weird because I'll trade anything, but I've actually got a um, a, a little bit of a reputation as being the gold guy. So when CNBC and Bloomberg calls and wants to know what's gold going on, they're like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "I, I don't know. It looks higher to me, you know." Um, I'm one of the founders of Trade the Markets which is one of the more successful trading education companies out there. I recently, uh, I'm still a, a shareholder over there, but uh, right now I run uh, my own personal blog, hubertcenters.com, H-U-B-E-R-T-S-E-N-T-E-R-S.com. My name's spelled really weird. Um, I put out daily videos every day about trading and what I'm doing, but how all this got started is we were running a day trading chat room that we would charge anywhere from $299 to $399 a month, and we would show people what well, we were trading in our real accounts in the e-minis, crude oil, gold, 
bonds, corn, soybeans, wheat, stocks. So basically, we just live trade in front of everybody. I didn't know back in the day that you weren't supposed to live trade in front of everybody until I started going to expos and I saw everybody trading on PowerPoint. And I'm like, that's interesting. That's BS. You can't really do that. And PowerPoint, you can always make everything look really good. But then when you start throwing real money at real things, it comes out a little bit differently. So I was educating, teaching people how to trade the E-minis. And a lot of people didn't have enough money. Exactly. Sim trading is great. Simulation trading is mental masturbation is what that's good for. It's actually really good for teaching you how to execute the trades. But I've met so many sim trading millionaires that it's it's amazing how many sim trading millionaires can't make can't rub two pennies together when you throw them in a real trading environment. It's kind of I don't think it's it's not funny. Ha ha. It's just kind of weird, you know, right? Like. I made a I made a billion dollars trading simulation money. That's great. How did, did you pay your mortgage off with that cash? No, it's it's never the same thing because you have this. It's it's a pucker effect. Does everybody want know? Does everybody in here know what the pucker effect is? Like when you start throwing real money and stuff, it's a pucker effect because you will just tighten up a little bit when you're actually trading real money, and you just kind of get to get used to it, kind of like doing push ups or or running distance or something like that. So how this all got started is a lot of people are going, look, I'm trading these E-minis, but they're chopping me up. And at the end of the week, I'm not really making any money. After commission cost, I'm actually losing money. So I went on a, a, a mission or a quest to find a decent market that was relatively <clears throat> easier to trade for people that had smaller accounts. And what I landed on was the gold market. So what I'm going to do in this presentation, if you'll let me, is I'm going to sell you on why you may want to try to trade gold. So if you've never traded gold a day in your life, if, you don't, if you've never traded futures, first off, let's do an informal survey. Who in here has never traded a futures contract ever in your life? Ever. Okay, so there's a few, but not many. What do you trade the most of? Do you trade more stocks, more options, futures, Forex? What do you trade the most of in here? Looks like there's a good mix, stocks and futures. Forex, GC, CL, ZN, futures, options, stocks. Okay. All right. So I got a little bit of an uphill battle here because I have to convince some of you to, number one, trade futures, and then I'm going to have to convince some of you to trade gold. So it's my job, my sales job on you today On you today will be to convince you to trade gold, and so I'm going to try to do that. So if you will, for me, just try to keep an open mind. I'm going ahead and telling you what I'm going to try to sell you. I'm going go to I'm gonna try to sell you on trading gold because I believe it's going to make you more money. Now, I'm not one of these gold bugs that believe that the world is coming to an end. I'm not one of them doomsday preppers where I think the economy is going to hell in a handbasket and we're going to be shaving off slivers of gold maple leaves at, at Walmart for a gallon of milk. I'm not one of those guys. I'm a guy that thinks, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a good thing to be like the Boy Scouts. Be prepared, but, but don't be crazy, right? You know, it's probably not a bad idea to have some fuel around the house. It's probably not a bad idea to have five or ten gallons of, you know, distilled water in case your pipeline busts and stuff like that. But I'm not a doomsday prepper. I'm a trader. I trade this for that. So the thing that I came into is I started back testing these gold setups. And what I could what I found is I could on average make anywhere from seven hundred to twenty three hundred dollars a week trading a one or a two lot. So I started back testing that first. Back testing that with, with no money, simulation money. Then I started front testing that with my own real money. And then on a couple of trades, on one of the trades, I had either a one lot or a two lot. And in about a week's time, I made $25,000 on one trade. And I was like, all right, I think I'm onto something here. I think I can teach people how to trade gold with, with a small amount of risk where they can potentially make anywhere from, you know, on the low side, maybe 300 a week. And on the high side, maybe, you know, $2,000 a week. So then I started teaching a handful of people these setups, and they started having about the same success, plus or minus a few, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you at least one gold trading setup, and it's, it's called the famous or infamous goodnight gold trade setup. And here's how it works. You're going to risk $600 to potentially, i got to say potentially because I'm registered, potentially make $6,000. So... Are you willing to at least take that amount of risk? Are you willing to risk $600 to potentially make $6,000? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so that's good. So it means you've got, you may have what it takes to be a trader. All right, so let me ask you something. How many days 
would you be willing to risk six hundred dollars to potentially make six thousand dollars? There's a little bit of a trick question. How many days would you be willing to do that? You would be willing to do that in every day that ends in Y. Or you should be, right? But why? Because right now I want to tell you one little thing about this that this thing only works thirty eight to forty two percent of the time. So let's do a little bit of math as we go through that. How many times I'm gonna erase this ink. How many times in a row do we really need this to work in order for it to be profitable for us? If we're gonna risk six hundred dollars to potentially make six thousand dollars, how many times do we need it to work? If we if we had it one out of time, one out of ten would work. Two out of ten would give us a good P and L. All right. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So now we're going to get started. So what, like I said, when you first start trading out, what you want to do is you always want to test everything. So I'm going to give you the rules, and please don't believe me. Test everything that I tell you. Okay. And don't just believe. You know, a lot of times when you when you start looking at a trading strategy. You'll, you'll, you won't test it, and you'll just believe what people say. So one thing I would say is I want, what I want you to do is trust but verify. If you want to trust me, I'm cool with that. I'm probably wired up the exact same way you are where I trust most people, but I want to verify everything that they tell me. All right. So we're going to talk about how to find a better way to trade. So before I start, I want to tell you the little story of the fable of the frog and the scorpion. Does, does everybody in here know the story of the frog and the scorpion? So I'm going to attempt to draw a little frog here. So the frog's on this side. I'm going to make him some big eyes here. Big eyes here. And here's going to be his little feet. There's his little feet. All right. So there's, there's the frog. All right. And then there's this stream right here. And then there's a scorpion on this side. You like my drawing of the scorpion? Like it's a circle with an S in it. All right. So the, the, the frog is talking to the scorpion. The scorpion says, hey, hey, frog, come over here and give me a ride to the other side of the stream. And the frog's like, well, you've lost your mind. You will kill me and eat me, and I will die. That's a bad idea for me. And the scorpion's like, no, 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 I would never do that. Once I'm on your back, if I sting you, I will also die. And the frog goes, hmm, you got a good point there. So the frog reluctantly swims to the other side of the stream, and the, the frog's here. The scorpion jumps on his back, and they're swimming across the stream. And about halfway through the stream, all of a sudden, the scorpion stings the frog, and as they're sinking to their death, the frog looks up to the scorpion and goes, Why? And the scorpion goes, Eh, it's in my nature. All right? So if you're trading a market, if you're trading a market that is this nature, okay? If you're trading a market that is this nature right here, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, that's painful if you try to do breakout strategies on that. On the other hand, if you try to do breakout strategies on something that trades like gold where it runs, consolidates, runs, consolidates, runs, and consolidates, which one do you think is easier to trade, A or B? Now, if you're a counter trend trader, A will be easier. If you are a trend trader or a trend follower, B will be by far easier to trade. Okay? Now, the only problem is you probably, if you trade futures, how many of you in here trade the E-minis? The Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell. I trade more Dow than anything just because I have a seat on the Chicago Board of Trade and I have a, a badge so that I get super low clearing rates on that side of things. But the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell, they all trade about the same. They run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. They're sprinters. They're not marathon runners. And about the time you think you've got them figured out, they whip back on you and just run over you and hunt you down and kill you. Has anybody in here had that experience where you've traded the E-minis, run, stop, reverse, chop, 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 run, stop, reverse, chop, 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 commissions eat you up, and there goes all your profits, right? Happens to everybody. All right, so it might not be your fault. You obviously are just trading the wrong market, okay? If you're trading the wrong market with the wrong uh, tactics or strategies, then that's obviously going to end bad for you. Now, oddly enough, you can trade with the right strategy at the wrong time 
and it still won't work. All right. So what's really, really, really important is you first have to understand what are the E-minis. I'll go through that in just a minute, Brian. So first, let's decide what are you? Are you a sprinter trader? Are you run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse? Or are you a marathon trader where run or it runs? Let's see, runs, consolidates, run, consolidates, run, consolidates. Here you go. You looking for my phone? Cell phone? Uh, hold on just a second. And there you go there. You're welcome. Um, which one are you? Are you a sprinter or are you a marathon right now? Which one do you which one do you think you gravitate more towards? The chop suey type mentality or the wealth building mentality? Which one are you? More marathon, a couple, couple sprinters. Okay, so the, it, it's good. It's what makes a market, right? That's why nobody trades the exact same way. Sprinters on E-mini, marathon on equities. They use different strategies like sp uh, spreads for consolidation. So I would say that I'm probably 80, I would say 70 to 80% a marathon trader and about 20 to 30% a, a, a sprinter trader. So I trend trading, I do about 70, 80% of. Counter trend trading, I do about 20 to 30% of. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a mix, but I lean heavily on the trend trading side of things, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to decide, are you in the trend mode or are you in the chop mode? And depending on your P&L, that's going to, and both depending on the stock, that's obviously going to depend on where you're at with your wealth building strategy, all right? So you got to figure that out the first, first thing, all right? So first thing you have to ask yourself, are you a trend trader or are you a counter trend trader? Which one are you? Are you a trend trader or a counter trend trader? And the reason that's important because that's going to really, really dictate what you're going to be able to trade because some markets are just terrible for trend traders, like crude oil, okay? Not the best thing for a trend trader. Um, you know, um, counter trend trading. You don't want to trade corn. So each individual market has its own personality. The same thing it would be for like, you know, if you're dating. Like, have you ever dated a boyfriend or a girlfriend where well, you, you just got the crazy ex boyfriend or the crazy ex girlfriend? Remember the bipolar one? That one minute she was happy and then two seconds later she was sad. Anybody remember that one? Or one minute she loves you and the second minute she's jealous because you're watching football. Like, it, markets tend to have the same type of personalities of like that. You have to figure out what the personality is of gold, of crude, of the E-minis, of natural gas, of silver, of palladium, of platinum, of corn, soybean, wheat. You have to know what those are before you start trading them. If you don't, you'll start trading something that doesn't really fit your trading methodology and strategy, and it's kind of like being in something that doesn't fit really well, okay? And you want to be in a market that you you just jive with really, really well. So you got to figure that out first, all right? That's why you want to figure that out. So we're going to talk about a way to pick a good market if you are interested in being a trend trader, all right? So the first thing you're going to look at is range. The second thing you're going to look at is how they trend. And then you're going to ask your, yourself the question, does this match my style? And at that point, you'll come to a profit point to where it'll just make it, in my opinion, easier for you to trade, okay? So the first thing is range. Let's talk about specs on gold. So here's the specs on gold. You see where I've got this highlighted? This is just trade station. You can see that it opens up for trading at 6 p.m. So right now it is 5 o'clock. So about the time I get ready, ready uh, to be closing up this webinar, we might actually be able to do some gold trading right here live if, if, if I run a little bit long. The gold market closes at 5.15 p.m. So here's a, here's a quick lesson if you're paying attention. How many minutes is this thing open a day? If it opens up at 6 p.m. and closes at 5.15 p.m., how many minutes is open a day? How many hours? There you go, 23 hours and 15 minutes. So it's only down for about 45 minutes. So that's good. That means it's open almost 24 hours. So that's a good market that you can hedge with also. So if you trade stocks or if you trade options, a lot of that stuff, you can't trade it overnight. But you can the futures markets because they're basically a 24-hour trading market. Okay, now two or three, two or three a.m. is a fun time to trade gold. 11:30 on is a great time to trade gold, and that's what we're going to talk about in the good night gold trade. So, gold is a hundred dollars a point. It moves in ten cent increments, and every increment, every ten cent move is worth ten dollars. So we're going to go through the specs one more time. So these are the gold specs. GC is the contract. GC is the 
the numeric symbol. Okay. And then right now what you're trading is Z, which is December. And then you're also trading the year 13. So GC, that's supposed to be a C, not a G. I'm trying to mess this up. There you go. There you go. That's a C. Now it's a big thick C. GC is the symbol. Z stands for December and 13. So it's just G C Z 13. Okay. Moves in 10 cent increments. Every one of those increments is a plus or minus $10. $100 an ounce, which means for every uh, move, that's 100 ounces of gold. The months you're going to trade are G, J, M, Q, B, and Z. Okay? Here's all this means. In December, in, in the second week in October, we're going to start trading December. In the second week of August, we're going to start trading in October. In the second week of June, we're going to straight trade, start trading August. So there's how it works. So that's an easy way. If you've never traded futures, that's how you do it. So just be be careful on rollover. Usually for gold, you know, you just have to modify the uh, the month for the month that you're talking that you're trading. So I'm going to kind of put the put the kind of nail down the point here. So this is an FOMC uh, minutes release, and this is an FOMC minutes release. So on the left hand side, we have a two minute chart of the Dow Mini. Notice what happens on the release at this hash mark. The FOMC decides they're going to do something. The Dow Mini goes straight up, goes up, retraces, goes straight back up, and then churns. Notice what gold does. Gold reacts. It goes up, consolidates, and then continues higher, and then consolidates. Which one would you prefer to trade, A or B? And I would say that's the most volatile time that you can trade any market is on FOMC day. Now there is actually a strategy that you can use on the FOMC trade here to do it, but obviously you can see it's a little easier to trade gold because it's such a trending, it's kind of like the Energizer Bunny type trade, okay? Now a lot of people will tell you like, okay, like if the index futures, if the Dow, if the S&P, if the NASDAQ, and if the Russell, if they go up, gold will go down. Totally 100% false. It actually is, it, they, sometimes they will go together, and sometimes they will go in opposite directions. It, the answer is, it depends on what they're doing at that, that time, all right? So, and we're going to do some analysis here at the end of the market. So, um, correlations work until they don't, and then you have to be smart enough or have enough common sense to go, oh, if the index futures are going up, um, Gold should be going down, not not so fast, easy. They both went up today, so that makes no sense, right? So you just have to remember correlations are not always correlated. Sometimes they will just do their own thing, and you just have to be aware of that. So let's talk about range a little bit. So I took this snapshot, I think, last week to update the data. So we're going to go through uh, the symbol. This is the symbol. This is an ATR. Does everyone Who does not know what an ATR is in here? If you don't let me know, and I'll cover it really quick. I'm gonna get a little, a little something to drink here, real quick. Okay. Okay. Don't know. All right. So ATR stands for Average True Range, and all it means is we're using a 14 period average true range. And since we're using a daily chart, it's gonna take today's range, and it's gonna go back 14 days in the past, and it's gonna look at all 14 days from day one all the way back to day 14. It's going to average those up and then divide those by 14, and that's going to give us an average of how big, how big that is, how big that range is on a daily range. So I'm using a 14 period, which is going to be 14 days in this example. All right. So the Dow is uh, 183 points times a $5 multiple, so you could make or lose 950, $915 trading days. Yeah, since I'm using a daily chart. And since I'm using 14 periods, that's going to be 14 days. If I was using a one-minute chart, that would be one. Uh, it would be 14 one-minute bars. All right. On the S&P, it moves 22.43 points. That's $50 a point. So you could make or lose $1,121. On the Nasdaq, it moves 47.75, $20 a point. You could make or lose $955 a day. Make or lose. Now, that is under the assumption that you're going to get every single bit of the move. 
you're never going to get every single bit of the move. I don't know about you, but I've been trading close to 20 years now. It's very hard to get the dead low and the dead high. You can get somewhere in there, but you're never really going to get, and I'm not going to say you're never, a few times you're going to get, a few times you're going to get the dead high and the dead low. It's just, I don't know, it's not really a, a skill thing. It's more of a luck thing, and it's more about being in the right place at the right time. So, yeah, being able to get 50 or 60% of the range, you're doing great. So the Russell moves about 17 points, $100 a point. You could make or lose basically $1,700 in a day, okay? So if you're going to trade the E-minis, if you're going to trade these right here, I would trade the Russell. I trade more of the Dow just because... I don't pay much in the commission side of things on it because I have a seat on the Chicago Board of Trade. Um, I have a seat, and I also have my own brokerage firm, so I don't pay a whole lot for the round turn, so I trade this one more. Now, remember, all four of these are going to go run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. 30-year bond moves about a full point a day. It's $1,000. You can make or lose $967. I also am a huge fan of the 30-year bond. The 30-year bond trades like this. It goes, it goes up. Pulls back, continues up, pulls back, continues up, pulls back. It's more methodical in nature. It's a really good trading market. I'm also a huge fan of the 30-year bond, so I don't want you to think that I'm not because I really love the 30-year bond. And um, we actually traded a lot of the bond today. Uh, crude oil. Uh, this thing is bipolar. you got to be careful with uh, crude oil. It'll run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, and then break away. Run, stop, reverse, break away to the back downside. Currently, I'm short crude with a target of around $93, okay? It's crazy. If you're not already profitable in some other market, leave crude alone. It'll rip your head off. Gold moves, on average, about 31 and a half points a day. It's a thousand. It's $100. So you could make or lose $3,159 a day, and it's way better and easier to trade, in my opinion, than, uh, than crude oil, okay? Uh, silver, it's a widow maker. It's a widow maker because it's five thousand dollars an ounce. It's still thirty one, uh, thirty seven fifty on a day. Just be careful. Silver is not the nicest thing in the world to your P and L if you get on the wrong side of it. Here's a Aussie dollar and here's the Euro dollar. Also, really good traders. These things tend to be trending in nature, but it depends on what's going on in the global economic situation. So that's the reason we're picking we're picking gold. It's got a a, a big nice thick range. It's got a good multiplier. And it's got a good plus or minus that we can lose or make in a day. Now, now this is um, not fond of silver traders yet. Yeah, yeah, not not fond of silver. So here's where you want to whip out your piece of paper and your pencil because this is where the teaching begins. This is where you're going to learn how to risk six hundred dollars to make six thousand. So the first thing you have to understand is where gold settles. Okay, so everybody, write this down. And you're going to write it down in the chat box because I'm going to make sure everybody knows the rules. So when I leave here, you'll know exactly how to do this trade. And you, there will be no questions whatsoever in your mind. At 1.30 p.m. East Coast time, that is when the COMEX settles. So write that down. Write down 1.30 p.m. EST in the chat box. Everybody write it down. And write it down in a piece of paper. If you write it down, you'll remember it. If you don't write it down, you're not going to remember it, and you're going to screw the trade up, and you're going to lose money, and then you will feel bad about it. Okay? 1.30 p.m. EST. 1.30 p.m. EST. COMEX settles. You're going to write that number down on a piece of paper, or you're going to look at it on your chart. Now, we're going to do this in the end, too. You're going to write that number down. Just use like a one-minute chart, and at 1.30 p.m., Note when COMEX settles. Now, if you don't have a decent data vendor, then just go to this link at the CME. Just It's a long URL, but we'll get you the slide somehow, and you'll have a recording of it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to select the date. You can see that I did this uh, on October the 16th, so just a few days ago. And then you can see we're trading the December month. This is the one that's got the most volume, and you can see it settled on this day at 1282 Point three, twelve eighty-two and thirty cents. Does everybody see that? Don't need data for settlement price. You don't need data for settlement price. You can just do it off of CME if you want. What is co what is COMEX settlement? That's when those guys they have these things that are called dinosaurs, and um, they still trade in those things called a trading pit. So when the COMEX pit closes, these guys settle up their orders, and then they're. It's, I, I'm making a joke, but the bond pit used to be. 
some of the biggest uh, pits in the world. So did the Euro dollar. And now it's all electronic, so there'll be like eight guys reading the newspaper and a couple of guys on the floor falling asleep. But that's when the pit traders settle up on their orders at 1.30 p.m. East Coast time. Worked on the uh, CBOT for four years. There you go. I mean, so you know what I'm talking about, Ed. So that's what we're talking about. That's a really, really important number. You're going to need it to do this trade. All right. Now, here are the rules for the good night gold trade. All right. Number one, first and foremost, you got to know what the daily trend is. Now, the way I do it is I'll just look at the past two to three weeks price action and go, is it in an uptrend or is it in a downtrend? Keep it simple. All right. Don't overthink the thing. If you're overthinking it, you're making it too hard. If you make it too hard, you're going to jack it up, you're going to lose money, and you're going to feel bad. You don't want to feel bad. You want to feel good. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down the COMEX settlement. So let's pretend at this point, at 1.30 today, let's pretend that gold settled at $1,500, okay? Let's, let's, let's pretend that it settled at $1,500 an ounce. It didn't, but we're making this up as an example. Then what you're going to do is at 11.30, this is the next time frame you need to know, at 11.30 p.m. East Coast time, everybody write down that time, 11.30 p.m. East Coast time. Write that down in the chat box. Eleven thirty p.m. East Coast time. All right. Now all you're going to do is if let's pretend, let's pretend that gold is in a in a daily uptrend. Okay. If gold is in a daily uptrend, and we know that it settled at one thirty p.m. East Coast time at fifteen hundred, well then at eleven thirty at night, we want to be a, we want it to be trading at a fifteen oh three or greater. So we want it to be trading up at least three points from the 1.30 p.m. close. All right? We don't want it to be up more than 15 points because if it's up more than 15 points, the move will have already taken place and we will already be too late to the party. So if gold traded, if gold closed at 1,500 at 1.30 p.m., then what we need at 11.30 p.m. tonight, we need it to be in a range from 15.03 in order to go long. But if it's trading at 15.15, 15, it's too late and we can't do the trade. Does that make sense? Has everybody got the rules down? That's, the, that's basically the good night gold trade in a nutshell. Okay. When tomorrow? No, tonight. Tonight. So to, you can do it tonight at eleven thirty is when you do the trade. Now uh, let's go through. Let's go through a couple of samples. Uh, looking for twelve points. Nope, not looking for twelve points. What we're looking for is let's say that let's go through this example one more time. Let's go at one thirty p.m. Gold settled at fifteen hundred. Okay, and then we then tonight at eleven thirty. And let's say we decided that gold was in an uptrend. Let's say gold at 11.30 p.m. tonight, let's say it was trading at 15.05. Can we do that trade, yes or no? What's the answer, yes or no? Can we do that trade? Sure, okay, cool. Now, if, if it's trading at 15.20, can we do that trade, yes or no? All right, cool, so you got it, smart, smart crew. All right, so we're going to pretend that... It it was it was trading at eleven thirty at night before we kiss it and go good night gold see you in the morning we're gonna place that trade we're gonna buy that we're gonna use a six point stop loss six points which is basically six hundred dollars and then our target is gonna be sixty points okay now you may have to hold that thing anywhere from two to four days in order to get your your money back. Are you going to cry about that? So let's go back one. Does, that, does, the, does the trade make sense to you so far? Now you're going to have decision points when you're up plus 20 from your entry, when you're up plus 40 from your entry, and then you got a real decision to make it plus 60. Pretty simple. Give me some reasons why you think this trade works really quickly. Why does this trade work? Why are you probably going to make more money? 
with this trade. Trend trade. We're, we're taking, we're, it's, 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 it's gold's nature to trend very well. If it trends very well, and we're just getting right on top of the beginning of the trend. So here's the cool thing. How gold works is the volume will start to move, and it'll start going like this. It'll start trending up because now you've already got Sydney open, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Moscow, and then London right here will start opening up. And then it'll really start trending well. So it's like a slow bus or a slow train that starts to move, and you're in the train before it really, really, really starts to move. What's the overnight margin? Depends on your broker, broker Susan, but if you enter it after 6 o'clock, it's considered intraday margin, not overnight. What's 2 to 4? All right, so what are some of the main reasons that you lose money right now? What are, what are, what are some of the main reasons or big mistakes that you make with your trading right now? Exiting too early. So how are you going to exit too early if you've got a 6-point stop loss and a 60 point target how are you going to do that you're not because you're going to be in bed now i will give you the first night or two that you do this trade you probably won't sleep because you're like oh my god what i'm i, I gotta get up and go check that pc i oh, oh lord i'm up 20 points what i do well you got a decision you gonna you're gonna cash out for your 2000 or you're gonna man up and just bump your stop up a little bit and see if you can make the 6000 all right so what's the winning ratio? The, win the winning ratio, the answer is it doesn't matter because you're risking $600 to potentially make $6,000, okay? But the winning ratio is about 38 to 42% for those that are interested in tracking that type of stuff. Can you do this every night? You can do it every night, but you're not going to do it every night because it's not going to set up every night, okay? So does anybody remember what the average true range in gold was in the slides before this? What's the average true range? Look at gold. $31.59. So on average, how many on the average, how many days are you going to have to hold this in order to get your 60 points? If we use this as our average true range for the past 14 days. Answer is two. Okay. Now, in in reality, it's probably going to take you three. Okay. And sometimes it's going to take you four. All right. So let's go th through. Um, let me see where am I at? Good night, gold. Oh, I, the reason I make indicators, I everything that I teach, I do myself, and then I also build myself an indicator, so I don't have to draw crazy lines on the chart. Indicators will just show, like it'll say, hey, here's a trade that you should think about doing. So I do it because it makes my life easier. It saves me time. It helps me find better trades. It makes me where I don't have to think so much. It's kind of automation, and I like to work smarter, not harder. And it's kind of like trading done for me. So what I do is I have it set up as a little indicator. You don't have to. I'm not here to sell you an indicator. I'm just telling you, you can pay a programmer a couple thousand dollars, feed them the rules, and they'll spit you out an indicator like this. So what I do is every night at 1130, I just come to my machine that goes, oh, oh, there's no setup tonight. Oh, there's no setup tonight. Oh, here you have a here you have a short trade. You should take it, and boom, there's your target number one. Oh, you have no setup. Okay. And then back here, I had here I had a good short setup. And it hit target one, and then target two, and then target three got hit. And it took one, two, three, four, four and a half days in order for me to make the 6,000. Okay? So some days are going to take a little bit longer. Okay? Um, so that's how that works. So I hate people that just cherry pick things and just give examples. So what I want to do, if you don't mind, do you mind if I go to live charts and we'll just go through this thing one time? So that you'll know exactly how it works, and I'll just show you with the indicator, like how it's working right now, and I'll give you a, a few extra tips. I always just like live charts; it's just more real for me, and that's how I trade anyway. I don't trade on PowerPoint. So let's go through this. Mm, let's discard. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to gold. So let's say, what's going on, Jason? Um, so let's go to good night gold trade. So here's the good night gold trade. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to copy this real quick. I'm going to copy this chart, and then I'm going to hit paste, and we're going to show you how you would do this, okay? I'm going to remove the volume. It's not crucial. I'm going to remove the indicator too. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a one-minute chart, okay? A one-minute chart. Now, now before we start, what we have to do is we have to figure what is the overall daily trend of gold. So let's go figure that out as a crew together. So I'm going to go over here to the video tab, and we're going to go at GC, 
Does everyone see this chart at GC? So gold's in an interesting spot right now. Above 1300, I like it as a long. I would really like it as a long above 1380. Below 1300, I like it as a short. So I would say that gold is in a, let's do it on a weekly chart here. I'm going to bump it down to a weekly chart. So gold's in a weekly downtrend, a major weekly downtrend, and a minor uptrend. Do you see this where you've got, I'm going to draw on the chart here really quickly. Uh, let me hit record here. If I hit record, it'll give me action on the pin for my live chart. So just give me just a second here. So on the weekly, we've got a few key things here. We have got a low, we've got a higher high, we have a higher low, and then a higher high. And now we've got a little bit of a, a modified uh, trend here. So we've got a major downtrend, minor, minor uptrend. So we can play with that minor uptrend. So I'm cool with that. So let's go back to the daily. Now if you look at the past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20, you've got a minor downtrend and you've also got a minor uptrend. But today we were up $24.50, okay? So first let's go through and bust the people that say, well, um, if the indexes are up, oh, indexes were up 11.50 today. Well, then gold should be down. Uh, nope, wasn't. Didn't work, right? So right now, I would say you've got a minor trend over the past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Over the past 10 days, I'd say you've got a minor trend up in gold. Is everybody, are we all basically on the same channel here? That above 1300 is a good long, all the way up to about 1380, and we're in a minor uptrend. Are we, is it, are we all on the same team here? All right, so we've had a, a nice we had a nice move up, bullish up move. We pulled back and then we're ramping back up again. So we have a pretty good little minor uptrend. So what we're going to do is we're going to say longs, okay? So then what we'll do now, if you take a look at when you look at this too, because we're going to do it both directions, we're also going to change it from here to there. Is that an uptrend or a downtrend? That's a downtrend, right? So we're going to look at the signals both directions in a downtrend. And then also in an uptrend to make sure that we know what's going on. So we're going to go back over here to our workspace really quickly so I can get to it. There we go. Now, today at 1.30, which in most countries is called 13.30. Okay. Let me make sure I got that set up right. 13.30 right there. And then I'm going to blow this up. And I'm going to move this to the left. And we're going to say that gold closed at... 1342.50. Does there, did everybody see how I did that? I just said at 1.30, 13.30 p.m., gold on a one-minute chart closed at 1342.50. Has everybody got that part? That's our, first, that's our second piece of information. Now what we want to do is we're going to wait until tonight, and if we are up three points from this number, then we can go long gold. If we're not up more than three points above 1342.50, we can't go long gold. Has everybody got the rules set in their head? If you had it pegged as a short, you'd want it to be down more than three points to the downside in order to short gold to the downside. Any questions on the setup? Gold closed at one at 1342.50. We think it's in an uptrend. So tonight at 1130 before I go to bed, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to go, okay, I want to be long some gold. Long at gold will be at 11.30 p.m. So if gold is trading at oh, 13.46, 13.46 at 11.30, I'll just enter the trade with a, with a six-point stop loss and an open target of 60 points. Why three points? That's just how the, the trade setup works, Rick R. It's, just, it's, it's a good filter mechanism that will keep you out of a lot of trouble. All right, so let's go through and take a look at the good night gold trade indicator. So last night's setup, if we go in here and format this and we go, okay, we're going to format this, and we're going to say, okay, the manual trend was up, and we've got it set to an uptrend, then what it's going to tell us is last night the rules did not qualify us. It just said there's no setup. So there was no setup last night, but the night before, there actually was. 
So um, the night before, you would have been long here at 13.17.90. Does everybody see that? Your stop would have been 13.11.90. Now, what do you notice right here? What just happened? What's this called? Right here when this happens, that target one, what's that called? That's called $2,000 per one contract. No, it's not confirmation. You went long, not last night, but the night before, at 13.17.90. You used a stop loss of 13.11.90. Your stop loss, if it was not hit, which actually got hit here intraday, if it was not hit, though, boom, you would have made your profit of 2000 Do you see that? You don't have to get up early. You can just go to bed at 1130 and do the trade. So let's go back here in time and see if there's any other good trades to be had. Okay. So I would say, okay, here's you another one. Here's a long entry. There's a long stop. No setup, no setup. Okay. Here's no setup. Here's a long entry, a stop, and a no setup. Now, the interesting thing is, is if we back up, if we back up to right here, notice like one, two, three, four, five, six, six days, that thing's no longer in an uptrend. It's now in a downtrend. Okay? So for six days, you've only had this minor uptrend. For the past, I would say, 30 days, you've had a downtrend. Do you see that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and modify. We're going to go not gold trade. We're going to say, you know what? Uh, for the past 30 days, we've been in a downtrend. So we're going to go minus one. Minus one. The past six days, it just started bouncing. So I'm trying to give you a look at both directions so that you understand how this works. Now, check this out. So you had no setup here. You had a short entry here and a short stop. So here was your short entry. Okay. Here was your short stop. And then notice what you had here. On the first night, target one was met, and then looky here. Then you had target two was met on the second, third day, and then when we go a little bit further down here, you can see that, boom, you now had this target hit. So you were, long, you were short here, and you had to wait uh, one day, two days, three days, three and a half days to get your 6,000. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand how, how it works? So if you go back here to the video tab, this is where I do my videos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The past seven days, you've had a nice little bounce up in gold for, from the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'd say that's 30, 40 solid days of just downtrend action here on, on the gold market. So you should have been short. So I gave you a look at the upside, and now I gave you a look at the downside, all with the good night gold parameters. And you can see that holding it through the downtrend with very little risk, risking six thousand, you could have potentially made two, four, six thousand dollars. If you do it on the first night using a two thousand dollar target or, or twenty points, you'd have risked six hundred to make two thousand. If you're looking for four thousand, you'd have had to hold one, two, three days. If you needed your whole full six thousand, you would have been held one, two, three, three and a half days. And that's how the good night gold, good night gold trade works. Any questions on the setup? I'm opening it up to questions here really quickly. Um, let me see here. All right. So um, we walked through some good night gold trades. Uh, you got to have some good setups. A good setup go, uh, executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. So you need to make sure you got a good setup. Uh, good is good enough. Don't try to filter out all the losers or the stopouts. This is a fool's game and for suckers only. Enjoy the process. Work through it some. You're going to have some wins and you're going to have some losses. So one thing I want to do before I open it up for questions here, I want to make you a special offer. That's just one of my favorite trade setups. All right, I have plenty of different trade setups for the different markets that I trade in. So I've got a, a, an online course that's called My Favorite Trade Setups right now that I normally sell for $197. Okay. I also had, did everybody see the clouds that were on my, on my, uh, on my charts that look just weird? Cloud Charting Secrets, I have a course that I sell for $197. That would be $394 of value that I actually sell on my side every day. I'm going to give them both to you for uh, less than half off for $97. If you go to this URL, hubertcenters.com forward slash up, hubertcenters.com forward slash up, you can go purchase that. You can have them both for the price of one of $97.
there is no recurring fees. It's just a one-time fee. Uh, it's only going to be for the first 100 people. You can also call my office here at area code 859-963-3445. Area code 859-963-3445. The URL is right there. Morgan just posted it for me, hubertcenters.com forward slash up. I'm going to stay here and answer your questions. And then one thing that I wanted to do to give back is if you want me to take a look at some other stocks or, or, or anything else, I'm going to go through it and show you how powerful the cloud, the Ichimoku is for your trading. So let me show you what you get with the course. So once you click that link, you're going to see this, this ugly looking dude here in a white shirt and a black suit. That's me. Um, and what you got to do is click uh, get this all for $97. Click that add to cart button. And then what will happen next is you'll go to another website that then you can see, uh, watch the video part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven. And then I also did two days of live trading here. There's day one, and here's day two. I recorded all this. This is an online video that you can watch at any time at your own pace. All right. When I set out to do this, I was only going to do about three hours of content, and then I ended up doing eight hours plus of content. And then I threw in a bonus course, which is the, the, the number one selling Ichimoku course on the market, Ichimoku uh, chart, cloud charting class. Um, that's yours too. You have a, uh, do you go through bonds? I, I do go through bonds. So let me show you what's on each module. So it's 100% satisfaction, no questions asked. If, if you just, you're like, all right, Hubert, you're a nice guy, but I can't understand the word you're saying. You, you talk like a redneck. I'll give your money back. I don't care. Um, if you if 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 you don't love it, I don't want your money. All right, I gotta be able to sleep at night. And you know, karma is a bitch, and I don't want to ever uh, rip anybody off. So uh, my goal is is you will be getting ten times the value that you're paying for this course, and you really will once you see all the content. So here's a couple of testimonials that people have written in unsolicited. I had a great day. I made uh, uh, 1,980 bucks shorting the bonds and shorting gold. I was up 350 on three contracts. Uh, I was trading the YM on the FOMC. Uh, I'll be ready next time to make even more. Um, and then this is one where they took the technical analysis 101 and my favorite trades course. So, and they, they love the Ichimoku course. So, and I get a lot of those. I've got one email address that I just collect those on. So here's what I'm going to share with you. In module one, I'm going to share with you swing trading and day trades. In module two, I'm going to trade swing trades and day trades also with you. And then on e-mini trades, I'm going to show you how to trade e-minis. And then gold tradings, uh, I've already showed you one of my great gold trading. It's called gold, uh, the good night gold trade. And then I'm going to do bond trades and day trades. And then you also have an Ichimoku cloud tours. So in module one, this is what you get. You get in module one, favorite ways to scan the markets and uh, the best way to scan for swing trades. Best way to scan the markets for day trades and how to filter out the trades that you take. Now in module two, I'm gonna give you a list of the seven horsemen, seven stocks that beat earnings 90% of the time, and seven stocks that beat earnings 80% of the time. That alone is really, really good, powerful information around earnings, all right, that you need to know if you're gonna trade earnings, you need to know the 14 stocks that beat earnings 80% of the time. I'm also going to show you how to trade stocks on gap plays, and I'm also going to show you how to play gap and go and gap and craps on stocks. In module three, we talk about my favorite trades on gaps with index futures. We talk about the power of the ambush trade, and we talk about the 85-115 fade trade. That's in the e-minis. We also talk about the crescendo trade setup, which is like having tomorrow's newspaper today if you know how to trade it the correct way. All right. And, um, Module four, not module three, module four, the famous good night gold trade, which you already have, all right? So you don't have to learn this one again. You already know how to do the good night gold trade. Uh, but you also learn the gold rush trade, and you also learn the gold bug trade. So what I've done here in all the markets that I trade, stocks, futures, uh, forex, crude oil, what I've done is I've picked my favorite trades out of all of them, and I've thrown them in a comprehensive course so you can get the best beat, best bits of my information at the at the lowest possible investment. Bond trading, I teach you how to do the overnight bond trade, the sneak attack trade, and then we also throw in the Ichimoku cloud, char uh, cloud charting secrets 101. And this is all for $97. And it's uh, hubertcenters.com forward slash up. So I'll answer your questions now. 
Will this include the automated trade or software? It does not include any uh, software or indicators, uh, Richard. No. Uh, I'm in Europe. Is it going? Is it going on for midnight now? Can I use any time apart from 11:30? Uh, Mark, that's a good question. You can always set the trade up before you go to bed, and just go ahead and have it bracketed ready for yourself, so you could just do an OSO or an OCO. Will you do bonds? Yes, I, I, I am covering bonds in the course. It's already pre-recorded. You're good to go. And if you have any questions, you can email us or call us if you have any questions. How much is mar how much is the margin to trade? Margin is different on every single thing that you trade. So the margin is depends on what you're trading. So on the E minis, it could be as low as three to five hundred. On bonds, it could be as low as three to five hundred. On gold, it may be as high as three thousand. It depends on the market. Every margin, every market has its own individual margin. Can you repeat what you have for the E-mini trades? The E-mini trades will be, let me see here, uh, how to trade index future gaps, the ambush trade, the 85-115 fade trade, and the crescendo trade setup. Uh, what size account do you need for gold? Jack, if you're just going to trade mini gold, you know, a couple thousand dollars. If you're going to trade uh, the big gold contract like I do, you're going to need three to five thousand dollars to trade. Yep. Now, here's one cool thing on Ichimoku, which is a bonus that you're going to get for just the price of one course, you're going to get two. Um, if you use what I teach you on Ichimoku, you could potentially make 33% on your money if you do it the wrong way. If you do it the right way, you can increase that to 79%. And that's back tested over the last five years on the S&P 500 on the stocks. Now, if you trade currencies, it's been profitable on 29 currency pairs over the past 10 years just by using the Ichimoku. So I'll show you how to do that. And if you stick around for a little bit, I will show you. Just stick around here because I'm, I'm done selling you. Now all I want to do is just answer your questions and help you out as much as I can. Um, so hopefully you see the power of why you should be trading gold and how much money you could potentially make or lose when you trade gold. Uh, can you explain what the E-minis are? They're index futures. They're Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell futures, Brian. Uh, Brian, I think I've got a class on Futures 101, and if I don't, I could probably teach you one. Can you watch the videos again and again? You can watch the videos again and again as much as you like. Um, I, I won't be taking them down at any time in the future. They're yours to keep. How much for gold? How, how much the gold SW? What's the SW? Can you do options on the gold place? Well, um, on some of the gold plays, you can do GLD. And you can do options on futures, but options on futures are a little tough to do because they're they're kind of thin, so you got to be a little careful. Uh, so you can do some, yes. Um, how much for the gold software? Oh, um, for uh, all the indicators and the and the gold trading secrets course, I think it's nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. But you don't need the software in order to do it. I'll just show you how to do it, and you can either go pay your own programmers, or I mean, you can buy the indicators from me, but it's not required at all. Would the price include the Ichimoku indicator? I haven't found any that look uh, forward like yours. Uh, uh, the Ichimoku indicator, which is this right here, let me let me give you the Ichimoku indicator really quickly. On most platforms, Ichimoku is just included already in the platform. So on TradeStation, like right here, you see the videos tab. So this is just Ichimoku. Um, it's included in TradeStation, eSignal, Thinkorswim, Toss. Everybody has their own version of Ichimoku. I don't really have to sell you anything. You should just have a decent charting package that already has Ichimoku on it. Does that indicator work on Ninja? It should. If, if it doesn't, call Ninja. Almost everybody has Ichimoku. All right. So let me show you how powerful this is. All right. So give me something. Just yell me out a stock of futures, any contract, and I'll show you how powerful Ichimoku is. That if you're not using Ichimoku, you're probably losing money. So ZB. So I'm just going to add US. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to teach you a little something on Ichimoku. And the entire course is way more comprehensive than this. But let me show you a couple of key things. Uh, let me hit record here. Resume. All right. Now let me show you this right here. Do you see this cloud here? Does everyone see where the price action is below the cloud right here? You see this price action? Everyone see the price action? Below this cloud. This is called the cloud. You see the cloud? That's the first thing you want to look at. Look at the cloud. And you'll see the price actions below the cloud. Now, do you also see this little blue line called a lagging line? That's below the, the, that's below the cloud, too. When that happens, 
then you are required by law to short that as a trader, all right? Unless you just hate money, all right? And you pro you're probably not here because you hate money, right? So now check out what's going on in the bond market now. Do you see where the price action over here is above the cloud? Now, do you see this lagging line right here that's almost above the cloud? I will be required by law in a few days to just have to go long the bond market. Because look how powerful this is. You had a short here, and you ride it all the way down to here until it gets back up here, and then you got to cover. All right? Let's talk about something like everybody knows. Let's go AAPL. Everybody follows Apple, right? Let's take a look at this, okay? So what happened to Apple once it went below the cloud and the lagging line went below the cloud? What happened? Did Apple go back up? Boo, no, no, no. Quite clean chair. Sold off, bounced, and then boom. Now it's above the cloud. See how what happened when it went above the cloud and the lagging line went above the cloud? It did have one little head fake here, and then boom, back above, back above, and then it bounced off the cloud, and now Apple's cruising higher. Okay? Tesla, T-S-L-A. Take a look at Tesla. Tesla is, is, is an interesting stock. It's definitely a bullish candidate. You can see that it just continues to go up. It comes down here at this cloud. This is going to be support. So what this does is this forecasts in the future for you. Um, it's a momentum cult stock. That's exactly what Tesla is. But check out what Tesla told you back here. It said, oh, I'm above the cloud, and my lagging line's above the cloud. You might want to get long me. And you might want to stay long me until I get back below this cloud. Then you can start shorting me. Let's talk about Netflix. Okay. Netflix, above the cloud, massive move. Now, had one heck of a sell-off today, right? Whippy is crazy. All right, let's talk about CMG. CMG. CMG, what's this? Oh, it's above the cloud, and it continues to cruise higher. Uh, EUR, USD. Um, great candidate for longs. It's above the cloud. The lagging line is above. It's probably going to go to a buck forty. It looks really, really good. Amazon, A M Z N. Okay, Amazon, wonderful candidate. Long sold off into the cloud. You got to be a buyer at the cloud here because that's support. And now it's cruising higher. It's going to go through three forty. G I L D. G I L D. Wonderful stock sold off into the cloud. Do you see where it bounced off of this little thing like a trampoline? You see that, Chris? That's a good uptrend. Bounce off this trampoline. Boing. Going to 70 bucks. National Bank of Greece. NBG. Love it. NBG above the cloud right here. It's probably going to continue up to about seven to eight bucks. Let's see where it's going to go. It's probably going to go to about ten dollars is where it looks like it's going to go. Adies. Alright. Adies. Massive uptrend. Every time it touched the cloud, what did it do? It bounced back off. Touch the cloud, bounce back off. Touch the cloud, bounce back off. So can you see how powerful knowing how to use Ichimoku cloud charting secrets is to your trading? You got to use it. It looks confusing at first. I'm not going to lie to you. It looks so confusing. You're like, man, that's like spaghetti soup. But once you learn how to use it, and you'll learn it as the bonus in the course, then you'll know how to do this. It's called at a glance so that you know exactly what to do um, on every chart setup as soon as you show the chart, okay? And there's the link for it. Uh, what setting do you use? I use the default setting. Do you use that indicator with some specific settings or default? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break open the indicator here because I'm just going to be completely transparent. I use the standard deviations. 9, 26, 52, 26, true, 26. I use the, the, the default standard is all I use. Nothing... What is the magenta line? The magenta line is called the standard line. The yellow line is called the turning line. I cover that in all the course. That's covered in all the course material for that. Does Ichimoku work for day trades? Yes. All right, so here's a cool thing. On Ichimoku, check this slide out right here. So I'm going to teach you a little bit more. So if you're a short-term trader, let's say that you wanted to look at an hourly chart. You see this? If you're an hourly chart trader, then if you get across above or below the cloud, then it's going to be good for a three-day move. Would that help you on your trades? Did you show that on bonds? Yeah, I showed it on bonds. And if you're a very short-term time trader, let's say you're going to go 10, a 10-minute 10 time frame, 
that's going to be a substantial move for the next two to four hours. Does that make sense? So if you're a short-term trader for days, you're going to use an hourly chart. That move will last for three days. If you're going to use a 10-minute time frame, that move sh should last for two to four hours. So now armed with that information, let's go back here and see if we can't do some ciphering. Let's go right here. So here's the daily, 60, and the 10-minute. So let's go throw me some other stuff out. I'll just do this stuff on the fly. Throw me some other symbols out, and I'll show you what I think they're going to do. Or I'll show you what Ichimoku tells you're going to do. ES. Let's, let's, how about we go at ES? All right, so the ES on the daily bounced off the cloud and said, I'm going to go bye-bye. I'm going to go north. All right, on a 60-minute time frame, it crossed above the cloud. Lord of mercy, it crossed the cloud back here on 1010, and it's had one, two, three days, and then it pulled back to the cloud. See that? How many days did I say it would move? How many days? After it went above the cloud, how many days did I say it? I said it would go one, two, three, huh, bounce back to the cloud. Now, it continued to go higher substantially, but that's okay, right? Let's go with Facebook. Okay. Facebook crossed above the cloud right here. Do you see it? Right here on 1014. It's going to go up one day, two day, three day, four day. It went up five days instead of three, so it was wrong. It was terrible. It went up five days. It should have only went up three. So it obviously didn't work at all. All right. Um, G O O G. So on Google here, it went up on 1014 above the cloud. It should only go up. It should. It's got the potential to continue for three days. It went up one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it went up six days. Obviously, I'm being a little funny, right? I, it says it's got the potential to move three days, and it went six. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? Russell at TF at TF is going to look the exact same as the S and P did. So you're going to have to go all the way back here. See where the Russell. See where the Russell went above on a 60-minute chart and the lagging line went above two? Day one, day two, day three, bounce off the cloud, and then it just continues to climb higher. CMG, CMG. Uh, CMG above the cloud has been, right here's the last time it chucked it above, 9.30. It went, it went below the cloud and above the cloud out here, and you had one, two, three days, and then it's also had a nice little base all the way up. Amazon pullback, um, yeah, AMZN. Amazon pullback, obviously you had it above the cloud here, right above the, above the cloud here, above the cloud here, nice little bounce. Uh, Martin F., where are you at? Um, retop it. There's so many, I'm just, I, I'm not avoiding any questions whatsoever. It's just they go by so fast I can't follow all of them. Does the course teach you what you need to know to use it for day and swing trades? Yes, it does, Thomas. Uh, I teach you everything you need to know about Ichimoku, yes. There's the sign-up link, hubertcenters.com forward slash up. Do your other setups need special indicators? A few of them do, Dave, but most of them don't. I would say probably 80 to 90% of my setups don't use any uh, special indicators of any kind. They're just based pure on price action and price action alone. MSFT, let's take a look at Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft on a on a 60 minute chart's been in a good solid uptrend ever since 1010, and it's coming back to touch the cloud. So it's a buy right here in this area. CLDS, a penny stock went up, double then crashed. I don't really trade penny stocks. CLDS for that mat for that fact right there because penny stocks are just terrible to trade. They're just you should always short penny stocks. So so you can see CLDS. It went from 43 cents to 80 cents, and then just stay away from penny stocks. They're just they're not good for your wealth at all, at all. Any futures, oil, gas, soybeans, wheat. Yes, I cover uh, oil. I don't trade a bunch of gas. I do tr uh, trade soybeans and wheat and corn, though. Yes, RNA, RNA. All right, RNA, massive short. Another penny stock, right? It's just a massive short. Stay away from it. It's going lower. Boeing, BA. Uh, Boeing looks good on the daily. It looks good on the 60 minute. It looks good on the 10 minute. It needs to close above about 123, but overall it looks good. What day is the lesson? I already signed up. Uh, Mick S. They're pre-recorded. You can take them as soon as you get your link uh, with your username and password. You can just go ahead and take the courses. 
It's already been pre-recorded. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can call the office. Area code 859-963-3445, um, I believe, is the office number. Let me let me look. I never call it. Let me. Uh, there you go. Area code 859-963-3445. Area code 859-963-3445. You can also go to hubertcenters.com forward slash up. Access for how long? Sophie, in, either until you die or until I die. One of us will die first. I just don't know which one it'll be. Um, if, if I die first, obviously I won't be paying the hosting bill. Therefore, the course will come down. And if you die first, you won't need access to the course because you'll be dead. But I have no plans at all of ever taking it down unless I'm just not here. Um, but when is your entry point? Price touches lower Ichimoku. Um, go ahead and buy the course. For $97, you're going to learn everything you need to know about Ichimoku cloud charting secrets, okay? And if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. I just can't sit here and teach you a three-hour class on Ichimoku, right? Because it'll just take too long, and plus other people bought the course. But, if you know, it's, it'll be the best $97 you ever spent because you're going to learn how to use Ichimoku. Uh, PC, PCL or PC... What is PBS? Let me take a look at yours really quickly. Uh, PCL. Um, PCL, mm, it is cloud. The lagging line is above the cloud. It's probably going to go higher. It looks decent. And it's, it looks like a pretty good stock to trade. Probably going to go above, it, it's got a good potential to go to 51. You're welcome. Uh, you've been, you, you have been exercising a lot lately. The right, I have been exercising a lot lately. Yes, I have. Yes. <laughs> W-A-G. Uh, W-A-G, hey. I can hear a tons of telephone calls behind me. I, the, the phone beside me right now is blinking off the hook. Jared is here to take your call. If you call and you get a busy signal, just leave a message, and they'll call you back either tonight or first thing in the morning. You'll either be talking to Jared, Susanna, or Kelly. If none of them are in the office, I'll answer the phone. All right. So if you are calling and you can't get through, just leave a message, and we'll take care of you. Uh, wag. Any other stocks you guys want to talk? Uh, take a look at uh, let me go through really quickly. I want to show you one more thing. Kind of put you over the hump here. Mm, let me see. I think I may have portions of the... All right, I've got portions of the course. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Um, what's this? This is what some of the course on Ichimoku. I'm going to go through some of the slides so you can see them. This is how detailed it is. You're going to learn exactly what each line means, how each line is calculated, and what it means to you, what the standard line is, how it's calculated. These are some of the slides from the course. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through you know, how to actually tell when to enter the trade, what stop loss to use. Okay? And then I'm going to give you the, the bullish signals. Here are all the bullish signals. Here are all the bearish signals right there on the slide. You can see them flying through. Um, here are some of the back testing results from Ichimoku. And then um, I'll show you some of these examples on my, my favorite time frames to use, uh, the timetable that you'll get as a cheat sheet to know how long to hold the trades for. And then um, you'll also get individual trade setups, the best stops to use. And let's see here what else you're getting. So that's on slide 118, and there's 165 more slides of that stuff right there. And it just goes through. So it's very, very comprehensive. So, you know, we talked about what's the best stop to use, how to enter it. So here, at step one, go long. At step two, exit long. At step one. So it's very simple. I break it down in its simplest pieces because I'm not the brightest guy in the shed, or I'm not the, the, the sharpest axe in the shed. So I break it down how I, I learn it myself, and then I reteach it to you, and we go from beginner to intermediate to advanced in a step-by-step -step fashion. Okay, I'm convinced to try it. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. So I'm going to stay for five more minutes. Any other questions you have or if any other stocks, futures, or other markets you want me to take a look at, let me know. I'll break them down for you real quick, and then I'm going to turn you loose. F-N-M-A. Never heard of that before. F-N-M-A. Let's take a look at that one. Ooh, that's a nice little find there. Federal National Mortgage Association. 
So the, it's above the cloud. You see this blue line? As soon as it gets above the blue, the, the red cloud here, that would be a nice long. And right now it's a, it's a sneak in, get a little bit long, and hope it doesn't close below 146. Overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, can you look at EWY? EWY. EWY looks fantabulous. It looks like it's going to go to 70. It looks really good. It's above the cloud, and the lagging line's pushing higher. Overall, it looks really good. Ford. Ford looks pretty good. It's bouncing off the cloud a lot. It's above the cloud. It looks like it's going to go to 18. G-O-O-G. I did Google, but we'll do it again. Google's Google. It's gappy right now. Obviously, it looks higher, but you're going to have to deal with this gap. So you got to be careful here with Google, but it looks good. Can you uh, can you project when Amazon will be down? A M Z N. I hope Amazon never goes down. I'm long Amazon from seventy five dollars. Um, Amazon will go down right now when it closes below three hundred. If it will close down here, you see this the cloud right here. If it'll come down here and close below three hundred, then we'll get a corrective move on Amazon to the downside. Uh, e G L E E G L E. EGLE looks good. It's probably going to sell off to about six and try a bounce. Um, e New Zealand, all right, New Zealand dollar NZDUSD. Okay, New Zealand dollar looks good. Probably going to go to eighty-six cents. Um, good here, good here. So probably eighty-six cents. Uh, can you project how I do that? Uh, is this included in the ninety-seven or is this a different course? John, it's included as a bonus. It's a whole three-hour course in and of itself. I'm giving you that as a bonus just as a personal thank you for your vote of confidence, for giving me your credit card, for me to teach you my favorite trade setups. And I individually sell these courses for $197 a piece. The number one question I get from people is, why are you doing it so cheap? I do it for a couple reasons. Number one, if I give you a course that I sell normally for $197 and another course that I normally sell for $197, if I give you a really good deal for $97 and you end up liking it and you end up liking my style, then I will probably come out with more courses down the, down the line, right? And then you will probably buy them. So, all right, so here's Chris T. So, Hubert, I paid $197 for the Ichimoku class. Chris, and th this, is, this can get scary, right? Because I don't personally know Chris T. I know him as a, as a member, right? But... Was the course worth it or not? Did you think you got a good value at 197? Good value. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you. It looks uh, really great. Bought it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Do you look for agreement among the different Ichimoku time frames or are there individual signals standalone? You can do both, John C. You can do both. Uh have become a better trader. Chris, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. B-E-N. Uh, B-E-N. So Ichimoku is a little different because when you first look at it, you're just like, your eyes pop out and you go like, oh, it's a mess. And then after you learn how to use it, you're like, oh, I, I immediately know exactly what's going to happen. Or you, you may not know what's going to happen, but you know what the probabilities are. Uh, B-E-N looks really good. Probably going to go to 56 and test this most recent high. Looks really good. EXPD. EXPD looks really good. A uh, good bullish up move. It's held the cloud. It looks good. Probably going to go to uh, this most recent high of 45.50. With you and Keen, have made $2,000 in three weeks of trading. Chris, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. I'm glad you're doing well. LVS. Keen's a good guy. So is Ross. They're, both of those guys are really good guys. Uh, Keen and Ross are two different styles, which that's cool. That's what makes a market. But Ross is more of the buy and hold value P.E. ratio. Keen's the more hyperactive uh, market maker guy. So that's really two really good looks at how to trade options. Uh, LVS looks really good. I don't like this candlestick right here, but the 10-minute says higher, the 60-minute says higher, so it's probably going to go through 75. But that candlestick right there does spook me a little bit. Uh, but overall, it doesn't look bad. O-N-V... Oh, O-N-V-O. Uh, looks good. I'm not a huge fan of things that are below $10, so this one's a little sketchy in my opinion, but it is above the cloud. The lagging line's above the cloud, probably going to 8 bucks. Just be careful. Anything that's my, below $10 tends to go to 7 Below $7 tends to go to 5 Micron Technologies, MU. 
uh, looking good. Look at how much respect. Look, look at how much respect MU gives the cloud. Watch here. It goes, hey cloud, how you doing? I'm doing good. Bounce. How you doing? Bounce. How you doing? Bounce. It's going to do it again. How you doing? Bounce. And it's going to bounce right back up here to 20. NASDAQ and the Dow, I've already done, but I'll do them again. At NQ. Uh, 3,400 on the Dow or on the NASDAQ looks good. You can be a buyer at 3,340 on. Uh, on uh, the NASDAQ. Let me show you a trade that I'm actually in myself in my swing trades. So the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ all looked great when I did this, but the Dow looked a little bad. This is a trade that I actually did on my live account. Notice how it went below the cloud here. Notice how it went back above the cloud. So I got long right in here. The, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell were all going higher. The Dow went above the cloud, and now I've just been holding the Dow as it's been kick, pulled, kicking and screaming, going higher. So here's your link one more time. Uh, I missed the beginning of the show for 97. Do you get this platform with the clouds on it? Just like we see in the presentation. Rod, who's your broker right now? And I'll tell you if you've already got the ability to use this to your advantage. Who are you clearing through? Uh, Scott Trade. I don't know if Scott Trade has it or not, but if you don't, ha if you don't have that, I show you a, a free way to use stock charts to use their scanning tool, which is free, to find these trades. All right. In the course, I, I teach you a way to do this right here. Let me show you this right here really quickly. Now, I don't know if I'm doing myself good or harm when I'm teaching you portions of the class, but let's go there. S T O C K T R O, stock chart, stock C H A R T. So let's go to stockcharts.com. Does everybody see this page on my browser right now? now so if you don't have it you can use this free tool to help yourself to find some good swing trades so you go to stocktrades.com you come over here to predefined scan results over in the uh, right hand corner you click that and then you scan down here where it says technical indicators candlestick patterns and now you see here where it says entering Ichimoku cloud moved above Ichimoku cloud moved below Ichimoku cloud so let's click on one of these tabs Oh, I didn't want that one. I want a different one. I want uh, entered above, moved above cloud. There we go. And now it'll scan and it'll tell you, I'm going to do it also by the close of the price action. And then you can just say, all right, there's WMR, SMJ, or SJM, SIAL, uh, MPC, ETR. So those are all, no data feeds are associated with this program at all. It's all free. So in the course, I show you how to scan for these and how to pick for them and how to ana analyze them to your benefit. So if you don't have a data feed in the course, I'll show you how to use that program for free. Yep. All right. That's it for me. Good luck. I hope it helps. Take advantage of the offer. Uh, HubertCenters.com forward slash up. Morgan, Trade Pub, thank you for having all of us. We really do appreciate it. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Good luck. Hope it helps. See you on the next webinar.